Hey folks, it's Tom, your frugal prepper. We are going to be replacing a CV axle on a 2004 Hyundai Elantra. I believe this probably works up to like 2004 or 8 or something. Um, these are actually really easy ones to do. Um, it's one of the things I love about my Hyundai. It's easy to work on. So uh, there's not that uh, wishbone thing with the bolt that gets stuck like there is on Hondas or any of that uh, stuff to mess with. So I'll kind of show you what's going on. So there is the car that we're going to be doing it on. We're going to be doing the uh, driver's side. Um, I did the passenger side a while ago. That video went really poorly. So we're going to see if we can't do a little better job on this one. Um, so what I've done here is I have a few things that I'm going to need. Um, you're going to need the axle itself. You can buy these at AutoZone in advance or whatever. Um, they're a lot cheaper to get online. So this is a new axle, not a remand one. I did put an AutoZone remand on the passenger side because I needed it quick. And it was like 50, 60 bucks. Um, the passenger or the driver side, even though it's shorter, was more for a remand axle. But uh, this is a new axle um, that I got on eBay. Uh, I had to wait a week for it to come. But um, it is a brand new axle. And it was $27.99 free shipping. So we'll see how that works out. But that can help save you some money. Usually axles, you know, you notice some vibration or some clicking a long time before they go bad. And you might be able to just order it, wait a week, and get it done. Um, a lot of times you have a lot of warning time with axles. So... This particular one is the same as the passenger side was. The inner... Uh, CV's joint is bad. Um, it's loose and so right around 65 to 75 it has a wicked vibration up front and um, it's getting worse and you'll usually notice as you you know turn the wheel a little one way or the other that it will kind of get worse or better or go away and come back. So that's what's going on. I'll go ahead and walk you through this. Um, another thing real quick that you're going to want is you are going to lose some transmission fluid. I recommend that you go to the dealer, get genuine Hyundai SP3, Mitsubishi transmission, SP3, Mitsubishi transmission fluid is also acceptable. So if you don't have a Hyundai dealership, look for a Mitsubishi dealership. Um, I personally wouldn't put the crap that they sell at AutoZone in that car. Um, those transmissions don't have a whole lot of trouble as long as you change them. It does have an internal filter. You can't change that. Um, I do a drop and fill on it here every 30,000 miles now. Um, and if it was due for a drop and fill, this would be the absolute perfect time to go ahead and drop it and then change the axle and then fill it up afterwards. Um, however, those things are about $7 a piece. $7 a quart at the transmission fluid. A drop and fill on mine um, usually takes about six to seven quarts but it's not too much to pay to keep your transmission working well uh, because you do have to go through quite a bit to pull, pull transmission on one of those it does require like dropping the subframe and all kinds of crazy stuff so um, if you can keep it going that's a low price to pay all right i'll go ahead and we'll get this sucker jacked up I've got wheel chocks in the back. I'm going to jack up just the driver's side tire. I'm going to leave the passenger side tire down on the ground because you will have to torque this uh, once you get the axle back on. And you can't torque it without one the other wheel on the ground because the other wheel will spin the opposite direction on you and you won't be able to you know torque it down. Um, you can get it apart with the impact gun, but uh, I highly recommend that you don't just hammer these on with the impact. Um, the torque specification on these is like um, 
I want to say it was 147 to 174 foot pounds, something like that. My torque wrench from Harbor Freight goes to 150, so that's within spec. That's what I'm going to send it to. And um, getting them too loose or too tight will cause um, failure of the wheel bearings. So go ahead and just, uh, you can get a torque wrench on a loaner tool. You can get the axle nut socket on a loaner tool from most of your auto parts stores. So go ahead and make that investment. You'll get your money back when you're done with the job. And um, you'll make sure that you have that right and don't have more problems in the future. So these cars do have a tow hook right up front. It's a great place to grab it if you're jacking up both wheels. I'm probably going to try to find a nice, good, strong suspension piece or a piece of frame over on the driver's side of the vehicle. But make sure you grab something solid uh, to jack it up and to put your jack stands on. And again, as you can see, I have my uh, wheel chocks behind the back tires. My driveway is on a little bit of a hill, rolling backwards. And I've also set the parking brake inside the vehicle, which uh, locks up those back tires. So I've got two jack stands out here, but I'm really just going to need one of them. Okay, so just want to show you here. I grab it. Here's the uh, tow hook. I've grabbed it by the uh, subframe here to jack it up. And then I've put the jack stand there under a piece of subframe uh, to hold it. I let the jack back down. And then I go ahead and bring the jack up just till it's snug and it touches this to add some extra support. Now I've seen some other channels where they talk about jacking up cars and they'll actually put the jack stand or stands under it and then they will leave the jack down like an inch or so just there as like an emergency for the car to fall on. I don't recommend that because these jacks are hydraulic. They have seals and O-rings in them those seals can blow out and if that drops on it and gets some extra momentum and hits this jack that really could cause enough shock to blow out the seals and this thing will just blow on the fluid out the back of it and that car will come straight down on top of you so just take it up to where it's just snug and just starts to push a little bit so that it's right there and then have at least one jack stand um, you know if you're extra worried you could put two jack stands over on this side i'm fine with just a, a one good solid jack stand and a jack as a backup all right so now what i'm going to go ahead and do here is go ahead and pop this tire off the wheel i'm going to use my impact wrench to do that but again if you have to use a uh, you know, a four-way or the lug wrench that came with the car. It's another good reason to have that tire on the ground on the other side so this one can't spin. Hang on, I got my air pressure down too low. All right, now we get the air pressure turned up. Okay, so you probably noticed while well, air compressor is where I couldn't really talk, but I put the tire under the car it just acts as an additional backup if this thing was to fall. Um, there's two bolts here, one on the top and bottom that will take this caliber loose. Um, and so I like to pull the caliber off. You could just pull the caliber bracket bolts and take it all off as one unit. But while I have it apart, I'm going to clean and re -lube all my brakes anyway so I'm going to take these two outer bolts off and then take the inner bolts off and that bracket will come out I will try to show you a little closer where those bolts exactly are okay so there is one bolt right here and then there is a matching bolt uh, if you can see that where's my finger 
Okay, there's a matching bolt right down here at the bottom of this caliper. And then we'll pry this caliper piece right here off. Okay, so I believe this is going to be a 14 millimeter. It is. We'll stick our rinse on here. Bring that loose. And we'll just take those bolts on out. Now I'm just going to take and pry in here a little bit to try to get a little bit of pressure off that caliper. And then we should just be able to pry this caliper straight up out of here. Pry it from the bottom too. go once that's out of here I'm gonna hook it around the strut there. that'll just kind of get that out of your way you don't want to leave that caliper hanging on the brake line because you might break the brake line so the next two bolts I'm gonna go after hold this caliper bracket on and I'll show you those so there is one bolt right here that my finger's touching and then there's another one just like it right down here if you can see that one and then that will take this bracket off you can also you can pull your brake pads out now if you want or they'll come off with the bracket so these bolts all hold the caliber bracket on are 17 millimeter There. And that removes the caliber bracket and the pads. And then I will clean all this up and relube it while I have it off. So with that off, we're now able to remove our rotor. And the rotor's off. You may have to tap on that with a hammer to get it off. So now we're down here where our axle is. We're going to take off our axle nut and get the axle loose. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and take out this cotter pin that is in the axle nut first. And sometimes these things are just a little bit of a pain. What we might have to do is get down here and pry on it. out of here there 
So that guy is out. We'll replace that with a new one. Now you're going to need a 32 millimeter axle nut socket. And we're going to hit that with the impact. If you don't have an impact, you can do this with a breaker bar and a half inch drive ratchet. Make sure your tire on the other side is solid on the ground and it's just it's going to be hard coming all the way out. It's going to take you a while. So I recommend getting an air compressor and an impact wrench. Um, if you don't want to go to the expense of that, get you a good heavy duty battery powered um, impact gun and then won't have quite as much torque but they'll probably get the job done. At least once you get it broke loose they will take it off. So we'll go ahead and take this out. There we go. That makes quick work of it. Your new axle will come with a new axle nut usually so you probably won't reuse this. I'd recommend not reusing it. You know it's torqued down. This is very important to hold the whole front hub and, and wheel bearing together. It's worth spending a little bit of money on a new one. Um, the washers here, you can reuse that. Now what we'll do is get a hammer and just hit on this guy. Um, if you uh, can't get it out easily with the hammer, don't keep hammering it till you mushroom it. Um, you can take and put your axle nut on backwards and hammer on it a little bit that way. But be careful that you don't uh, booger up your threads although I guess you're reuse you're not going to reuse that nut or axle um, I also like to get an air hammer with a pointed bit and stick right in the middle and knock them loose that way if they're uh, gonna be fussy um, I like to do this before I take any of the tie rod or strut or ball joint or any of that stuff loose so that I got a nice surface to hit across usually these come out pretty easy so let me go get a big hammer okay so Go ahead and whack that a time or two, and you see that's come loose real easy. Some of these will hang up worse than others. Just be careful if you're hammering, you don't want to mushroom out that end or it won't fit back through the hub and you'll be in a real mess. So the next thing I'm going to do is take my outer tie rod end off and take the two strut bolts out. Okay, so here's our outer tie rod end right here. And what we're gonna do is take this nut off and then we're gonna hit this spot right here with a hammer to shock it loose. Um, an air hammer would also work. I'll see if I can just whack it a couple times with the hammer I got and that should pop loose. This is an aftermarket tie rod end that was replaced a few months back. Um, uh, so it does not have a cotter pin in it. It has like one of those locking self-locking nuts um, But the factory one will have a cotter pin in it. That you'll have to take out um, What I always do as well is get you some PB blaster And I will just spray down this nut and threads real good Just to give us some extra insurance that that's going to come apart. Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and spray these two strut bolts with some PB Blaster as well because I'm going to have to take those loose. Okay, so now I'll go clean off the camera lens and then we'll get back to it. That'll give that PB Blaster a chance to sit for a minute. PB blaster the whole camera. Okay, so I want to say the factory nut on the factory tie rod ends, like a uh, 17. However, this aftermarket one is a 19, and a three quarter would also fit. Three quarter and 19 are real close. So I'll go ahead and put my impact gun on here. You can do this without an impact, uh, you know, just a ratchet. 
but you run the risk if this starts turning in here when you're halfway out on the nut you you, you got a mess on your hands you'll end up having to cut that replace the tie rod in and get an alignment so an impact wrench would be preferred here there we go so now that's off now we should just be able to hit this right here on this metal part not the boot you don't want to pinch the boot or that and we'll end up having to replace the tie rod in. so we'll just take this and go right down here i'll tap it on the bottom not yet Try not to pinch that boot by hitting cute hard on it. All right, let me move this camera back so I can get a swing. If this doesn't work, I'll get the air hammer. There she went. And that'll pop out just like that. And this is a good time to just check and see if you got any play and this inner tie rod end, there's not, it's a little loose. It's not stiff and staying up, but there's no play. So we're good there. So now that that's loose, we're gonna take off these uh, two strut bolts right here. Okay, so I got a 17 millimeter for my impact wrench. I moved that caliber out of the way a little. I'll take and stick my impact the gun on her and you can see it's starting to turn this bolt back here so I'm gonna have to hold that there's that one Go ahead and take this bolt out now before you loosen the bottom one because it could get pinched in there. And now we'll go ahead and do this bottom one. Okay, so now I'll just have to screw this back on here until it's kind of flush. And then we'll hammer it out as far as we can. Let me have to move it. So when this happens, what you can do is come over here and just turn it a little on this side. both Boy, that one's stuck in there. Okay, so what I've had to do here is just get a breaker bar on that bolt and get her moving a little. And now I'll go ahead and hit her with the impact wrench some more. The other thing I had to do was go ahead and put this top bolt back in just to give it so I could prime it. 
and put her on leasing. So now we're going to get ready to pull our axle. So there's a couple things I want to do to get ready. First, I'm going to unpack our new axle and get it ready so that I can compare it quickly to the one I pull out and make sure it's the same length and everything. Now, just so that you know, this car does not have anti-lock brakes. It will still have this ring on it, like all of them do at least all the aftermarket ones um, have that ring on it in case you do I guess this car does still have wheel speed sensors even though it does not have interlock brakes I'm not sure why but it does uh, but I looked up the VIN number I checked and I also hooked up my Altel scan tool it does not have interlock brakes so um, I only have this one quart of Hyundai SP3 transmission fluid you're going to lose some fluid once you pop this axle out and in case I don't have in case I lose more than a quart so you know I want to pop it out check them real quick get the new one popped in to stop the fluid from coming out in case I lose more than a quart um, since this is Sunday and there's nowhere around here to buy Hyundai or Mitsubishi SP3 transmission fluid on a Sunday I'm going to grab a clean drain pan and I'll go ahead and clean it out one final time that way if I do have to reuse a little bit of that used transmission fluid I will um, so that I can get to work right and like I said it won't be too much longer I'll be doing a drop and fill on it here anyway one other thing I'll mention real quick is like before you do this job make sure you have some cotter pins um, this is a little assortment from AutoZone and I also have a little assortment up here from Harbor Freight that I've never opened. Um, just those were on sale one time, so I grabbed them. But uh, make sure you have that because you're going to need to put a cotter pin back in that axle. And if you have the factory tie rod end, it'll also have one of those uh, castle nuts that you put a cotter pin through. This aftermarket uh, Duralast one that I have on there now does not have that. Okay, so I've got this axle ready to go. I'm just going ahead and taking that new axle nut off on that end. And then I've gone ahead and taken the orange cap off on this end. And then I'll lay that out there and have it ready for when I uh, pop that other axle out. Um, as you can see, these have a little clip in them. And that's what locks your axle in right there. Is this little metal clip. It kind of compresses. So we'll actually get a pry bar stick right here. Pop that out. Then the new one you'll just jam it in there and it'll pop in. You'll feel it seat. Now 
Okay. So our axle here is loose right here. And so now we're going to go ahead and pry uh, this uh, knuckle loose from this strut up here. And there, now that that's loose, we're ready to go ahead and get our um, axle out of this guy. And as you can see, this one does not have the speed ring on it. And um, interestingly enough, on the other side, here comes an ambulance. On the other side, it uh, does have a speed sensor. I notice on this side it does not. So maybe it just uses that one speed sensor on the other side. Also, this little back plate thing here is about to come apart on this one. So just be careful not to damage that. It's pretty rusted. Um, probably would need to replace it sometime here soon. But uh, I'll get as long as I can out of it. So now it's just a matter of wrestling this axle out of here. You may have to hit it a little. It's just about there. 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 Now that axle's loose from the knuckle, so now we just gotta pop it out. And it's gonna be real hard to show you, but you just gotta follow that axle back to where it pops into the transmission, and you're gonna take your pry bar and pop it out of there. All right, so I've got my clean drain pan. We'll slide that back under here. And I'll reach under here with my pry bar and pop this sucker loose. Boy, that strut bearing is really loose. This thing's gonna need struts soon. <coughs> Boy, they don't give you a lot of room to get that bit in here. Let me find it. Wow, the uh, passenger side was a lot easier to get to, I'll tell you. There. <clears throat> there she came. Let me get that drain pan over here. Alright, now, I've just got to compare these two axles real quick and get the new one popped in here. Is it leaking? They look identical in length. Yeah, I think we're good. I'll be her in here. Come on, baby. Pop in there. <laughs> Boy, she don't want to pop in there. Oh, I think she might be in there. Nope. You'll be able to kind of feel it. It's right there.
there she went. You just gotta get the teeth and everything kind of lined up, and then she will pop in there. Lost quite a bit of fluid, so I'm glad I had that drain pan there. So, now, it's just a matter of putting our axle back in here to the hub. There she goes. All right, now we'll put our strut back on the knuckle and we'll get that all lined back up. If I can just get one of these bolts started, we'll be set. I might need an alignment pin, but we'll see here. We can get her with this little screwdriver. There's that one. And that one will just tap it a little. Okay. So I'm just gonna take a break and then I'll be right back. I'm gonna clean off these nasty hands a little. Okay, so I've got my strut bolts put back in. Um, now, I'm just gonna say real quick, you can take the ball joint off of the bottom to do these two, and a lot of people would do them that way. And if you're not doing this specific car, make sure that your strut bolts aren't part of your alignment. Um, on some cars, those bolts actually have a little like, uh, like cam on them, and as you turn them, it tilts the wheel in and out. This particular car does not have that, so I find it's easier to take the strut bolts out because this ball joint is kind of a, a hard one to get to. And um, I'm going to be doing struts on this thing before too long, so now I've got the bolts broke loose real nice, so they should come apart easier next time. So I'll go ahead and put my nuts back on these, and then we'll hammer them home with the impact. help if I had it in the forward position. Boy, it's like rookie time now. Okay, now that I just spent a good 10 minutes looking around for the uh, tie rod in the uh, nut um, <laughs> that was like right under my shoulder the whole time. I'm kind of laying down to get to this. Anyway, we're going to put our tie rod in back in here. You just kind of have to wiggle that back and forth. She'll drop kind of down in there. Get her started. All right. So now I'm just going to go ahead and spray that with a little PB blaster. And we're just going to get her started by hand. Hopefully. Uh, let's get a little PB blaster on the inside of the nut too. Alright. Yay. This would be a good place for some uh, rubber gloves probably. I've got some in there. Boy. She's a little burgered up on the end there. I tell you, just from tapping on it with that hammer to get it loose, I think. I shouldn't have hit that part of it. Anyway, let me, this one is a 19, that's a 21, there's a 19. 
just kind of work it a little there. It's not too bad. I just I put it up the threads just a hair. If I can get it past that burgered up spot, then we'll take her on home there. And um, I like to normally put these on with hand tools. I just don't have a 19.38 out here handy at the moment or an adapter. So I'm going to hammer it on there with my impact. But I'm just going to take and put my impact on its lowest setting. Um, because you're putting a steel bolt into an aluminum knuckle. And um, you can overdo that and kind of mushroom out that knuckle, and then it won't, uh, you know, over time you're not going to be able to get it to seat in there tight anymore. So these don't take a ton of force. Um, just get them good and snug. That is perfectly good enough. So now that's back together. Now we're ready to go ahead and get our axle nut uh, put on up here next. So let me go grab the axle nut and a cotter pin and we will get that done. I'll grab the torque wrench as well. Okay, so go ahead and put my new nut on here. And we'll just go ahead and get it as far as we can here by hand. It's a 32 millimeter. I don't know if I said 33 before, but it's a 32. Okay, so now I've got my Harbor Freight impact wrench here, and I've got it set to its maximum setting of 150 foot pounds. Like I said, I believe these are 147 to 170 something. So 150 will put it within spec. Now, this has a lot of holes in it, so like right now, this hole here doesn't line up. But if you go around, you'll find one of these other like four that usually do. If you have to turn it a little more or whatever, you might have to. But so now we're just gonna take this pin, the long one, here and bend her up over like so. Okay, and then we'll take our short one. And we'll cut it off mostly. We'll leave a little bit. And then we're actually just going to take and push that down the other way. And then I'll hit that over and I will trim that off as well. So, so, so you can see how I did that. Just like so. And so that will keep that nut from being able to back out. Okay, so I have cleaned up my caliber brackets and uh, re-lubed everything. Cleaned up my brake pads and put some more lubricant on those. Um, so now I am ready to go ahead and put this back together. Our next step here will be to put our rotor back on. And um, I'll tell you, before you put that rotor on, make sure that this little, this little dust shield metal piece, make sure those holes are lined up real good there. Uh, that'll make that uh, inside caliber bracket go on a little easier for you. So now we're ready to go ahead and slide our bracket back up here and get it lined up with the holes. I think the easiest way to do this is to put the bolt in part way and uh, just kind of try to get it lined up and it's kind of part by feel. 
once you get that top bolt in, then go ahead and get your bottom bolt lined up and put in right here. And then tighten that sucker down. Okay, so now that that's in, we'll go ahead and slide our brake pads on. On this car, the one with the squealer tab goes to the outside. And we'll let the squealer tab goes on the inside. Now that those are in, we're ready to go ahead and slide on our brake caliper. And just make sure that your hose isn't all twisted up or anything crazy. And then we'll get the bolts that hold that and put those back in. Okay, go ahead and remove my bungee cord and get a 14 millimeter socket back out. And that's all back together. <clears throat> now I'm going to clean up and then we will be ready to stick the tire back on. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get this tire back on here. Then all I have to do is find the other lug nuts. find the other log nuts here okay so if you have an eight-year-old and you sit your lug nuts down be aware that they may end up somewhere else in your yard completely separate from each other 
and then he will go to his grandma's house and you won't even be around he won't even be around for you to yell at him about it <clears throat> but after a half hour of walking around the backyard I did find them both so I'm not going to complain these have this little plastic ring that hold the hub cap on and I got one ring here I won't put the other ring here it should have four of them but uh, as I've had lug nuts uh, these things seem to like to strip lug nuts for some reason a lot and uh, I've had to replace some <laughs> you can't get some uh, dormant ones that have the plastic ring but they're expensive so as long as I got two I am good enough and you can always steal some from like one of the back rooms. As long as you got two on each one. To hold that hubcap down. And let me go ahead and handle this bottom one. Alright. So here's our old uh, CV axle. And boy, that thing is really loose. I mean, it's not completely bad yet, but it's loose and it's just about to split. Let me show you here. So if you look down here, see where it's just about to split open? It's got all them cracks in it. So that's not good. And it's just, the joints on it are really loose. They're not have no rigidity to it whatsoever and um, on the end down here there's actually a little slop in it so all right that's uh, how we uh, do the driver's side CV axle on a 2004 Hyundai Elantra get all this edited and thrown up for y'all and uh, if you have to do this job I highly recommend an impact wrench. It's going to make life easier. If you don't want to do an air compressor and all that, um, at least get a really good electric one. Um, I think the Milwaukee's look like they're really nice. I don't own an electric one, but uh, you know, do a little research and see about that. At least you, you might pay a little bit for the tool. Um, this impact wrench is from Home Depot. It's a Husky, 80 bucks. As you can tell, it's well-worn. I've used the crap out of it. Um, um, it seems to work well, but, uh, you know, an electric will save you from having to get an air compressor and all that. So, that's all I got. This is Tom the Frugal Prepper. I'll talk to y'all later. Also, once you get her down off the jack stand, start her up and check that transmission fluid. You don't want to, want you to forget that.